What's up gamers? Welcome to the final episode in our series for shiny Pokemon locations. This is going to be the water Pokemon location video and you're going to be able to find tons of water Pokemon shinies by following this guide. Now, if you want to watch any of our other videos, which is basically all the other typings, go ahead and check out this playlist. It has been done. It is complete. We have tons of videos in there and you guys subscribing and helping this series go along is amazing. So thank you all for hitting that like button, subscribing and watching this. And I'm glad you are all getting your shinies in this game. But now it's time to get into the water video, which is by far one of the most difficult videos in this series. Now, since water Pokemon are by far the most difficult Pokemon to hunt with sandwiches in this game, there's going to have to be a few techniques in order for everyone to get the water Pokemon they want. One of them is going to be by first using different sandwiches to isolate all the dual type ones, which we'll talk about. The second method is going to be by date skipping in a specific location while your water sandwich is active in order to get mass outbreaks. You can just do that if you don't like the style of hunting in this video. And we'll go over the ones that are going to need that. And the third one is just RNG running around until you find the water Pokemon you specifically want. But that's why I made this guide to make it a little bit helpful for you all. Let's Let's go. Two Pokemon that I want to mention first are regular Wooper, which you can get from a trade in Cascarafa by talking to a lady over there. You must bring her a Paldean Wooper and she'll give you the regular Wooper. But the only way to get that shiny is by breeding and the fastest way is Masuda breeding. The next Pokemon is going to be Rotom Wash. And the only way to get Rotom Wash is by watching our electric video so you can see how to grab yourself a Rotom, which you will eventually change into a Rotom Wash with an item. Hey, I heard that if you do hit that subscribe button and hit the like button you will get shiny luck and get tons of water pokemon that are shiny seriously you should probably do it every subscriber on this channel can tell you it's working and you should become a subscriber too because you can say it's gonna work now surskit is a bug water pokemon and you can find this pokemon basically around most of the water bodies in the south part of the map you go around any of the water areas and as you walk around you'll see them spawn the best way to get these to spawn in large amounts is going to to be by using a bug sandwich the bug sandwich will be the best way in order to do that so just go in and out respawn them from the water bodies and then come back to them eventually they will lose their water typing and become just a bug flying so if you want to get the pre-evolution it's right over there and they're a little bit darker than the normal one now for these three hunts we're going to be talking about casaroya lake if you want to hunt down marils and azumarils you're going to have to pop the fairy sandwich and when you pop the fairy sandwich your goal is pretty much to be walking around or zooming really fast back and forth in this area and by doing that you'll just get families of marils and azumarils to spawn now marrow will be a green pokemon and azumarill will be yellow so when you're running around this area and you also are jumping in the water you'll be able to find easy marils and azumarils because they are family spawns the same thing's going to apply if you are looking for choodle or dreadnaws when you pop a rock sandwich and run around this area you're going to just get families of dreadnaws and Choodles spawning everywhere. And when there's family spawning, like I mentioned, you can go really fast. I found mine over in this little river uh, at the start, right at the Casaroya spot, but they're pretty much everywhere you go when you're walking along this long path in the area. Now, another Pokemon that you can also get by popping the Psychic Sandwich. This is one's going to be big because popping a Psychic is going to separate them out from so many others are Slowpoke and Slow bro now slow pokes are, are a little bit harder to determine as a shiny pokemon because they're a lot lighter but slow bro is going to be very obvious as the coloration is completely different if you're going to want to get a slow king you're going to have to get a slow poke and running around casaroya lake is probably a really good idea in order to get one basically what you want to do with all three of the hunts i mentioned is pretty much go from that one side run to another side and you could also find them in the water as well i find running to be a lot faster than going into the laggy lake here so once again fairy sandwich for marrow zumoro rock sandwich for chudo dreadnaw and psychic sandwiches for slow poke and slow bro now another pokemon that you're going to be finding around the casaroya lake area is going to be tatsugiri now this pokemon is going to spawn in a lot greater amounts when you are popping the dragon sandwich now you can find tatsugiri roaming around the land you can find tatsugiri roaming around the water but my favorite spot for tatsugiri 
Giddy was right by Sokorat Trail as you're walking in and coming out of the area. I found that to be fun because they, you can despawn the sushi Pokemon right in front of you. And uh, they despawn and respawn in as you keep heading up here. It's harder to despawn out a group of them. There's just so many on the map. Now, Tatsugiri has three shinies. You're going to have an orange one with stripes on it. You're going to have an orange one that looks a little bit darker with a muddier paste on top. And then you're going to have one that is just pure white colored. So there's going to be three and it's going to be hard to notice it. But eventually, if you really do pay attention to their backs, you will spot them. And collecting all three is definitely a must. So dragon sandwich for Tatsugiri to make your life easier because with a water sandwich, it's, it's, it's just chaos. Okay, so for Wingles, the best place that you want to go to is going to be over here at the Poku Poku Lighthouse right close by to the cave where the legendary Pokemon are. That's going to be the Inlet Grotto. By popping the Flying Sandwich, it's going to eliminate all the insane amounts of water Pokemon that will show up with it. So that'll be the best way to get yourself a Wingle. Then to spot the Wingle, it's going to be basically a green stripe. And what you got to do is just walk in and out of Inlet Grotto in order to get new ones to spawn in the area. Now, if you want to go and hunt down Pelipper, my suggestion would be to come over to this rock all the way north on the map. And once you're at this spot over here and you jump onto this peak, you're going to notice a bunch more Pelippers seem to spawn here with the flying sandwich. I noticed when I have the water sandwich, it's not as powerful for Pelippers as it is with the flying sandwich. Now, you'll also be able to find Pelippers as you go further out into the water areas. It's a great way to get them. The further away, the more I notice Pelipper spawn. So that would be a way to get Pelipper. Now, the next location is going to be Gracia Stones. And in Gracia Stones, if you do pop a Psychic Sandwich, you're going to be able to spawn in a bunch of Veluza. These Pokemon love spawning here, and it's very easy to walk back and forth on this pathway until you happen to see a Veluza. You have to be careful, though, because Veluzas can jump onto the land when they do lock onto you. So Veluzas are going to be a very big spawn when it comes to this area on this rock here. And also, if you pop a flying sandwich, you can separate out a Gyarados because Gyarados tend to spawn in this area as well. And the amount of Gyarados that show up here when you pop a flying sandwich is going to be insane. So it's going to be pretty easy for you to grab yourself a Gyarados. Remember, Veluza is going to be with the Psychic Sandwich. That'll get you a nice green shiny with its fins. And Gyarados is going to be with the Flying Sandwich. And that is going to get you a nice red shiny here. So this is the spot but if you want to hunt down these two water Pokemon specifically, but you have to use those sandwiches. Now, Bruxish is going to be a Pokemon located at an island a little bit south of the South Province area. It's going to be an island right over there. And when you have the Psychic Sandwich, all you're looking for is just a little bit of a different coloration coming out the water instead of the purple. Regular Bruxish is like a purple yellow and the shiny has this red, yellow, green texture to it. So it's a lot more different. And the best part about this island is as you walk on here, you can step into the water. You see all the Bruxish, you confirm by doing a double home zoom in to see if that's your shiny. If it's not, you just have to pull back to the island. And once you're back at the island, they will despawn and then you can come back again, respawn a, a group in and, and keep rinsing and repeating over and over again. But you're going to need the psychic sandwich to get the maximum amount of spawns when it comes to getting the Bruxish. So that's how you're going to get that one. And that's how it's going to help us isolate them out from all the other water Pokemon. The next location that we're going to be talking about is going to be by Porto Mar nada and what we're going to be taking advantage of for two specific pokemon here is going to be the town spawn trick which means we're going to be walking back into the town when it comes to getting the pokemon to despawn and then walking right back out when you want them to spawn in now the first pokemon is going to require an ice sandwich and this is going to be cloister this is how we're going to get cloisters to spawn cloisters are going to be really obvious as you do the double home zoom in you're just going to get so many with the ice sandwich and you're going to notice the blue color in the water as they surface if it doesn't happen to be a cloister no worries all you got to do is just walk back into town despawn them all and then come right back and that's how you're going to be finding a cloister shiny now when you pop the poison sandwich the poison sandwich is going to spawn a bunch of quillfish now quillfish is going to be an easy shiny to get for violet players because that's literally going to be the only pokemon that's going to spawn by this town and quillfish is going to be obvious because it's going to be a nice pink color scarlet players have to move a little bit further to the right in order to to get their quillfishes to spawn because the spawns up here are mixed a lot with the Screlps, which is a version exclusive Pokemon. So that's how Scarlet players are going to have to do that so they don't have to deal with it. But most likely, if they stay in the same spot, you're going to have to deal with Screlps. So Violet players do have the better spawn for that. So remember, Ice 
sandwich for cloister and poison sandwich for quillfish and that's how you're going to make the distinction between those pokemon from all the other water pokemon in this game now if you're gonna want screlp screlp is pretty much everywhere in pokemon scarlet so these entire water spots located on the map will show you where these screlps are for scarlet players this is only going to be for you guys and all you're gonna be looking for is a shiny that looks like this and you just have to despawn a group in and respawn the group back and and go back and forth until you happen to finally get the shiny pokemon you want and that's pretty much how you're going to be getting screlp that'll eventually evolve into dragogi which is going to be a poison dragon and lose the water typing if you pop your poison sandwich and you head over to lavencia south and head over to the beach this is going to be a very good spot where you're going to find Marinis walking around everywhere. Now, Marinis will spawn left and right on this beach. So what you have to do is make sure you're zoomed out. You're looking around very carefully for a nice pinkish reddish color. It's going to be very different from all the blue ones you see. So it's not going to be a hard shiny to miss. So basically just walk around the beach, despawn a group out, respawn a group in, and you should be able to easily get a Marini without the distractions of other Pokemon showing up, which then you can finally evolve into an awesome toxapex which is a great pokemon and i love this pokemon too it's it's a it's a great shiny to have so remember poison sandwich is the way you're going to separate this one out from all the other water pokemon now in our ground video we talk about this really nice spot this is going to be located in the north province area one watchtower and when you pop a ground sandwich it's going to help you spawn in barboches and whiz caches around this lovely lake and all you have to do is just make rotations over again and you'll get the families of wish caches and barboach to spawn as you're making your rotation so simply just make sure you stick to the edge walk around in circles and you will eventually get them to spawn as families now we also talked about that if it's not as great to do that all you have to do is do a date skip in that area this also applies to almost every single pokemon we do talk about if they spawn in a specific area and you don't seem feel like you're getting enough all you have to do is do a date skip and for those who don't like date skipping all you have to do is just simply it pop a sandwich at around 11:58, and just wait for the date to change in that location naturally and you should get a mass outbreak for that specific pokemon that's always going to be the best way to get a shiny but we do these videos because not everyone loves everything to do with mass outbreaks and we try to get the best overworld spawns for you guys so for the water sandwich we're gonna go old school here i'm gonna get one cucumber and i'm gonna use my two salty herba mysticas but as usual in the comment section if you guys have a better recipe please let us know and tell us a non-salty recipe because you guys are great at doing that and that's going to give you sparkling power water tidal power water and encounter power water okay so if you want a very nice wiglet wug trio spot to respawn and despawn this is going to be the area so i'm on this beach coming down off the snow area you could also jump over from north province area one and swim to it it's this beach right here all the way north and over here there are tons of wiglets and wug trios that happen to spawn on the beach there they are also fun fact for some reason, that rock formation up there has a different spawn table. Don't know why, but yeah, look at the amount of consistent Wug Trios you get on this beach. You don't really get much interference from other Pokemon. The only thing that will show up once in a while will be like Weasel. And as you get closer to the land area, maybe Gold Duck. But if you stay on this side over here, away from that rock, like I mentioned, see that rock? It spawned a whole nother table of Pokemon. You're going to get your Woke Trio. So what I do is usually you can run to the end and try to pick up a few more shore ones. But like I mentioned, if you're by this little river here, you're going to probably pick up Gold Ducks. But the beach is going to have the Woke Trios, right? But once you get all your Woke Trios to spawn, you clear off this, guys, and you head back. We're going to basically respawn in our Woke Trios again. So just make sure to walk slowly because these are solo spawns here. There's one. There's another one. There's your Buizo Interference. There's your Woke Trio. And you also get your Wiglets over here. So we have these guys guys again over there we turn around the ones that despawn behind me and we'll get new ones so i noticed this is the most consistent for wug trios let me know if you found a better beach but i really do like this one for the hunting of these wug trios as you can see look at that <laughs> look at the amount that just bought around me so this is pretty good the only annoying part is when these little mountain or little rock areas spawn in groups of pokemon like up like five go goats it's going to affect the rate of spawns here and just like low kick spawned here it's so weird how spawns work in this game anyway good luck on your wug trio wiglet hunt in this spot this is another wug trio spot it's all the way north province area three but not the long beach here you're gonna have to just hop over this spot and go to this one because it's more open area as a beach which is pretty interesting 
so it gives us some good spawns here's some woke trios over here you also get some water pokemon in the background there look, look at the amount of spawns here and then you have this nice curve up which will give you more spawns for wug trio now wiglets don't spawn here at all it this is like pure wug trio so you just have to wait for your wug trio shining to show up here unfortunately this dumb rock here is going to spawn pokemon that don't even belong here so you want to make sure to get the maximum amount of wug trio spawning around it before you get those you know go goats and other stuff spawning here but yeah look at that look at this look at the amount of wug trios you could despawn out you get new ones spawning in just like that and then hop back around and uh yeah there we go wug trios so this is a pure wug trio no wiglets uh some weasels here and there but it's a very good wug trio spot so there you go this is going to be probably one of the weirdest hunts in the game for water Pokemon. It's going to be Basculin. Now, Basculin's going to come in two colors, red and blue. And the shinies are going to be very difficult to tell apart. But the slight differences you have to look for are on its little flippers and the top of its head, the spikes. And you're going to be looking for a little bit more dimmer yellow color when it comes to it. Because from a distance, it's going to be really hard to tell. So you're going to have to slow down and pay attention to that. Now, in order for you to pull this off for Basculin, this is the spot where you're gonna want to go there's this little bit of a circle area around this rock here and what i like to do is i look down at the water i angle my camera and i just move slowly across something like that and then i just kind of see what spawns there make sure to have your double home button ready to go which you can enable from settings because that helps you to zoom in on these little tiny pixels here so you can tell the difference between what is a shiny and what is not a shiny now the cool part about rotating around this entire little lake area is not only are you having just basculins but that's what i focus on when i'm here but you know you have the occasional magic carp psyduck and choodles roaming around so you can keep in mind those shinies as you're focusing on basculin but mainly you're here for basculins so what i do is just i jump there i climb up i'm going on these rocks it's a little bit annoying at first but i am looking to the right i'm looking down i'm trying to see okay is this white or is this yellow i'm just going around this entire area now the cool part about rotating around this lake is it's a little bit it's a little bit difficult but once you get the hang of it the cool part about rotating around this is that the spawns will despawn as you circle and you see how I just came in and there's a whole entire family here. So I just zoom in. I look, okay, these are the blue ones. I don't see anything that resembles the shiny and I continue to move to the right. There's a red one. There's a solo blue one and you will get families that do happen to spawn here. And that's the cool part about this spot. So yeah, good luck with your basculin hunt. Uh, <laughs> there's another family that just spawned. You, your zoom in is going to be your big one for this one. Good luck. Okay, this is going to be a, another basculin spot. It's going to be this little river right here by the swamp area. And basically you just run it up until this gate you're gonna be on the lookout here for basculin families because they spawn in great amounts here no other families really spawn here just basculin so what, what you want to do is you just go at high speed and just make sure you're on the lookout for these basculins as you're going uh, so straight up there you go there's another family here i'm heading up this entire path running up the river there's another family over there now they do come in two colors the blue and the red ones the stripe ones uh there's no specific left or right of the map for them they both can spawn in exactly one area so just keep that in mind as you're heading towards your destination to get a couple families there and as we head towards this gate we should start to see a few more show up right about here is where they usually come in come down to the gate make sure you're turning around because you'll see the family spawn in despawn there's there's another group like that there's another family over there and then i just despawn this group out like that there's another family that spawns in so pretty much if you don't want to go up and down the river this area might be the spot for you right over here. there's another family that spawned they just there's another one that's spawned. okay it might be this area actually it's a lot better so going up and down the river you basically come up here right despawn everything out there's there's more families right below me look at that look at that that's crazy despawn as many as you can out then head back down there's a family over there so i'm just gonna zoom in see if it's the shiny with the yellowish color nope okay then i'm gonna continue to head back down here they're gonna despawn out and then we should get another whole family right there yeah this is i like this this is way better than traveling the whole river actually there we go we're gonna despawn that group out as soon as that group despawns we should get another family there right there another family comes in as soon as we despawn that family we should get another one as i tap there there's another family okay so there is a great way of manipulating the basculins to spawn a bit now it's going to be a little annoying here because you're in direct water contact but that is the way to do it and to get families of them to spawn so here you go here's a great spot that you can pull this off right over here from this ledge and then running back down now if you're looking for a psyduck 
specifically, there are going to be a lot of locations where you can find Psyduck. They are pretty much going to be by anywhere where there's rivers and by the wetlands. Psyducks are pretty much everywhere in this game. And on this map, you can see there are locations where they're going to be. And when you have a water sandwich, you enhance them a bit, but they do tend to show up everywhere. So far in this game, I've actually just caught in two randomly by having a water sandwich and just by traveling, not focusing on them. So what you'll be on the lookout for is a blue Psyduck and they look really cool. I, this clip here of a Psyduck is just me jumping off a waterfall and spotting it. And he was just sitting right there in front of me uh, by the first area. So that's pretty much how I got my Psyduck. That's literally the only tip I have for Psyduck. If you want a complete only Psyduck, you have to do a date skip to try to get a mass outbreak specifically for them. If you don't care too much about Psyduck, we have the gold duck spot for you guys. So there you go. If you are looking to hunt a gold duck, this is going to be the best place to go. It's the pit. Uh, the pit is located all the way here. So pretty much right from Fury Falls or North Province Area 2, you want to climb up here and there's going to be this little bit circle here with a little piece of land in it. And the only Pokemon that is going to spawn here is going to be Gold Duck. That's it. The only Mon. So this is the Gold Duck pit. This can also be used is an experienced farmer as well. It's a really of AFK. So if you throw Pokemon out, they'll just auto battle them. They'll just keep respawning. And that's pretty much how it's going to work. But uh, an idea for this is find a nice spot for a picnic reset. Along this edge, there is spots you can try. And that'll reset all the go ducks because that is a lot spawning at once, which makes this a very, very good spot. So good luck getting your shiny gold duck here. Uh, it should be pretty easy to do as that's the only one that spawns. The next spot that we're going to be talking about is going to be for Finizens and Magikarps. And what you want to do is go to Lavincia South. This is going to require a specific placement for yourselves here with the water sandwich. And I know it's so chaotic looking at these, look at all these marrows randomly on the beach. All right, so we're going to head down towards this beach area right over here. And you're going to notice a corner, a specific corner here. That corner, when you tap it, is going to put you right back into Lavincia. You can notice that there are Finizens and Magikarps that head towards the beach here. They just like to come here and chill. So that got me thinking, wait a second, we can use a town spawn to our advantage to get more to show up. And there you see that over there. So what I like to do is I like to tap this corner right over here and that puts me Lavincia. And then I'm going to come back out here and it's going to put me in East Province area too. And what you notice is, look at that, a group of Finizen just spawned on my left. And they're also hanging out with some Magikarps in the area too. And Magikarps, if you turn your camera to the right, are also going to head towards the beach and just hang out there. There's a Finizen that's going to make its way out. But yeah, just keep repeating this over again. And eventually you're going to get a group of them to spawn that has your shiny as well as having a Magikarp show up too. And the benefit is while you're focusing specifically on one Pokemon, because this hunt requires you to really focus on Pokemon because water is insane. So you're keeping your eyes peeled on all those and everything else that shows up is going to be bonus. So Marini are going to be red. Marils are going to be green. The Buizels are going to be yellow. And Gyarados, of course, is going to be red. So it is a bonus that you might get a lot of other water Pokemon while doing this. But while you constantly go in and out, you have that high chance of getting your Finizen to show up because look at that. You just get groups of them showing up. It's pretty nice. Focus on those specific Pokemon over here. Keep your eyes on them and it'll make your hunt a lot easier when trying to get yourself a shiny. If you just don't want to do the Lavincia trick to get Finizen, well, then you could just do date skips until you get one on the map. And on my map here is where mine is located, right over here. All right, now we're going to try to evolve Finizen into Palafin. And the first step is just join somebody's world. So once you are in a friend's world, all you have to do is you just have to give it a rare candy from level 37 to 38 to evolve it into Palafin. That's pretty much all you have to do. And since mine is already over leveled, I caught mine at level 48. Uh, it's going to be really simple to evolve it into its form. So I'm just going to the beach for a nice screenshot. I think we have a very nice background here. I love it. I'm just going to go into my bag, grab my rare candy, give it to this Pokemon. Boom. Now it's level 43 and it should automatically just evolve. <laughs> Okay, and when we're in a fight, all we have to do is just do flip turn, hit your target Pokemon, and it's going to go right back to me. And then I get to pick the Pokemon I want to throw out next. And I'm just going to throw back the same Pokemon again. And you're going to notice the form is going to pretty much change after that from zero to hero. If you're trying to look for a nice blue Shellos or the east one, this is going to be a very good location I found. You come over to the South Province Area 5 Pokemon Center, and on this beach, you'll be able to find a good amount of them roaming around. Now, now, I mentioned to you guys, the key to this water shiny hunting video is to do target focusing, which means your eyes are only going to be looking for this guy. So you're going to ignore everything around you and simply just go across the beach. And if something else shiny 
shiny happens to be on the way, well, then congratulations. But yeah, so here's what the shiny looks like. It's a little bit different from the regular one. It's not going to be too obvious. So make sure you got your double home zoom in to see. But yeah, basically what you want to do is hug the land more than hugging the sea. Because when you hug the land, you're going to have an easier time getting these Pokemon to spawn uh, on the beach. If you go closer to the water, you're going to get more water spawns, which will limit the land spawns. But pretty much what you're doing is you're going to be looking at this Pokemon to see if it is a shiny. If you have doubts that it possibly is a shiny, always send out your Pokemon to do some auto battling. But yeah, basically going back and forth on this beach is a great way to check if you are going to have a shiny. That's pretty much what I do as, as I run to the end of this area. Once I get to the end, just turn back, rinse and repeat, and do this until you happen to bump into your shiny. And just make sure to get a nice zoom in and, and close look to see if that does fit the shiny criteria. That's how you're going to get the blue shellos. Now, let's talk about the pink one. Okay, so if you are hunting down pink shellos, you want to come down to this beach over here, right? By Porto Marinada. And this beach is going to be where you'll be going back and forth looking for this pink shellos. And as you can see, there it is right in front of us. Now, there's going to be more spawns of weasels uh, being a little bit annoying. But I noticed this is the best spot you can specifically go to hunt these shellos. So make sure you're walking, not running too fast and kind of zigzagging closer to the beach area. Area, rather than running into the water because if you're able to do that you will eventually get these shallows to spawn just like these ones over here and i know this is the way people want to do things without having to mass outbreak but remember if not enough of these pokemon show you basically have to just pop a sandwich in the close vicinity of where they actually do spawn and you will get a mass outbreak for that pokemon by doing the date skipping in that specific area or popping a sandwich you know right before the time change and seeing what happens but this is pretty much how you're going to be finding your shallows here's another two one and you just go back and forth on this beach until you happen to get one so that's pretty much how to get both the west and the east one you now know what their shinies look like as well yeah good luck so if you are hunting love disc of which is pretty much going to spawn most of the time in groups of group families this is going to be the locations on the map where you're going to be able to find them currently i am positioned outside of lavincia which is where the lighthouse is on the right side and what you want to do is pretty much run an entire path south until you reach the first area lighthouse i know that sounds actually insane but this is where you're going to get most of your love just to show up now the reason i started this off in lavincia is because if you're lazy and you don't want to do that you can simply just come to the town like this despawn them all out and just come back and hope you get <laughs> a shiny love just to show up now please note there are going to be other pokemon in the area but look at that there's another love disc family right in front of my face and you just need to have a lot of shiny awareness when it comes to water pokemon because that's the best way that you're going to be able to hunt them down now look at that like just passing up on here by the lighthouse very easy just to get these pokemon to show up so if you go up and down pretty much there's there's your love disc again you stick to the areas where they are you're gonna have to use map awareness for this now if you're not satisfied with the method of hunting down the pokemon like i've been hunting them like going back to the town and back and forth like that well then you could just again follow the pathway from the certain lighthouses so here's another love disc family see how they just spawned along the way that's pretty much how water hunting's gonna go for you guys who hate mass outbreaks if you're going to want to do some easy lavincia town resets or love disc just come over here right in front of this building here on the map like that and you're gonna want to just pop in and out until you respawn them so back up into the town the Vincia and pull up and that's how you're going to be able to spawn in pokemon like love disc and here we have two families over here just waiting for us to get a shiny if you're going to be hunting for dundozo you're going to want to head to lake lagaroya i mean castle roya that's where you're going to go and they're going to be spotted here in the water but the problem is you're not really going to find a really spicy spot where you're going to get just tons of dundozos to show up and i think that's going to be the biggest issue when it comes to turning on a water sandwich because as you can see just going around this area you're going to see marrows there's still there's still dragonairs there's there's dundozo there but not many in slow pokes and just tons of different water families so the solution to this is unfortunately for a lot of you guys <laughs> it's going to be either you're going to travel this entire lake really slowly and hope you get a shiny dundoza to show up but also it's going to be almost every other pokemon or you can get on a piece of land dead center and start to do date skipping because that's going to be the best method to get him to show up so first things first i want to make sure that i'm placed myself fully in the center of casa Roya lake that way i can 
can activate any spawn around the area. The second thing I want to do is make sure my sandwich is active because having an active sandwich is going to be boosting those shiny chances of it happening. So once that's all set, what I like to do is open up my map so I have a clear view of what's going to spawn in the area. And I'm going to then do a date skip. As you can see right now, we have Tatsugiri as an outbreak, which is which is cool. But we're here for water Pokemon specifically. And Tatsugiri is pretty easy with a dragon sandwich. But right now we got the water sandwich. So what I'm going to do is, oh my gosh, I'm already in February by making all these videos with date skipping. We're going to do a date skip and you're going to see everything around the area change, right? And you're just going to kind of repeat this process until you get yourself what you need. And when you get your outbreak for your specific Pokemon, it's going to be a, a simple knockout 60 of them to get maximum chances. If you have the sandwich as well on, plus your shiny charm, you'll be able to have very good chances on getting these done dozo to spawn. Now, the ones on this island aren't too hard to just despawn and respawn them out. So I could simply come like this, but obviously you need to do max chances to get the right Dundozo to spawn. So it's gonna be a nice yellow shiny. So good luck getting your Dundozo. And the best way, like I said, is to do it via mass outbreak. Now, according to the Pokedex, Vaporeon is going to be a very rarely seen mod. And there are two possible easy ways of really getting it. The first one is going to be by watching our normal video and just locating an Eevee, adding a water stone to it and watching it into a Vaporeon. Or you can just come to the middle of Lake Casaroya and do our date skipping technique. Now, you will get some Vaporeon, as you can see. They are in this area as well, but you're not going to get a lot of them to show up. We're just going to back out over here at Casaroya Lake and start to do some date skipping. Because once you arrive at the Vaporeon outbreak, you'll be seeing a bunch of them in the area. And your job is just going to be knock out the Vaporeon until you get yourselves a purple colored one, which will be the shiny one. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male and human female Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon is the most compatible Pokemon for you? This is going to be a really fun spot if you want to hunt Buizel and Floatzel. You're going to get Gyarados too in this area, but it's pretty good. So what you want to do is head all the way north up to this area, North Province Area 3, come to the beach, and then jump to the left side of this beach, right over here. And what you'll notice is there's a very shallow-ish water area. You can determine that by the color separation because of the sand. It is a little laggy because it's raining a Mayan, but look what we get. Look what we get when we just focus on this area. You're going to get Gyarados spawning, but not only just Gyarados, but you're just going to get Floatzels and Buizels. And that's it. Look at that. They also spawn here. So I guess you can call this a dual hunting spot with your water sandwich. If you stick to this area, look, there's another family over here. There's Gyarados over there doing its own thing. Sometimes you get the Wiglets on the sand, but there you go. Floatzel, Buizel. So you can keep going back and forth in this area in this little shallow spot. There's another family over here. And eventually you'll either get a shiny Gyarados or you'll get your shiny Floatzel or Buizel. If you don't like running as much and you want to go swimming, you could just swim around the whole island and wait until you get a gold one that's how i got a gold one but if you want to stay towards the land and not do anything crazy and just have family spawn in front of you this is probably going to be the best way also the fact that it is a kind of a dual hunt so good luck getting your shiny float souls your shiny weasels here it shouldn't be too hard with the fact that you could just run back and forth and get families of them to spawn there you go there's an option for you to hunt without having to swim and isolate them out a bit from other pokemon good luck with your hunt so getting an aracuda or barracuda family to spawn in this game is not going to be easy. They're scattered throughout the rivers. They're going to be randomly in the ocean. So I feel like the best way to get this family to spawn is going to be by doing mass outbreaks. And what I did was I did my mass outbreak resetting from this area in Lavincia, and I happened to get the outbreak in this location right over here. And that's going to be probably the best way for you to do it. I know I do my best for you guys not to do mass outbreaks, but it, sometimes you just have to do them for certain Pokemon, especially when it comes to water Pokemon. You're going to have to compromise and uh, do some date skipping. If you don't like date skipping, of course, you know, pop a sandwich right before 1159, but here's pretty much what you're going to have to do. Knock out 60 of these Pokemon, and here's what the shiny is going to look like on screen, and then you can evolve it. If you don't want to do this method, well, you can just travel in the oceans marked by the map in these locations, and hopefully RNG will help you, and you'll be able to get a family to spawn and should be able to get your shiny, but mass outbreakers simply just knock out 60, and after that, you're going to have your full chances of getting a shiny to show up. Luckily, this is in a picnic resettable area, which you can do reset. So that should help you get your shiny Aracuda pretty quick. It's blue. It's not brown. It's going to look very different. So good luck with that. All right, gamers, this is going to be for the Lumion and Finion Pokemon locations. So the first spot we're going to go to is Porto Marinada over here. 
a uh, big, big important part because you get to do town resets here. And the cool part is these Lumions and Fideons also live by this area. Now, there's a lazy approach you can do where it's simply going to be, well, there's the Fideons as you can see right over there. Uh, there's gonna be a lazy approach that you could do is simply by doing the town reset. Which you could tap it like that and come back out. And you pretty much are gonna be like, oh, I hope my Pokemon spawns. Hope you get your Lumions or Fideons because they do end up showing up. There's a Fideon over there. There's another Fideon over there. They do end up showing up by this area and you could constantly do this over and over again until you get your Pokemon to spawn, but that's not really fun as well. And because they do sometimes spawn as families with the Lumions, you're going to want to travel everywhere according to the map. The whole entire orange location is anywhere you swim, you'll get those families of Lumions to spawn. But I'll tell you something that I have recently figured out that is going to be a very helpful tip for you people who are hunting in the water. And that's going to be heading over towards these rock locations. The one I'm heading to is right here on the screen. So I'm just going to swim from Puerto Marinada. You can see that it's directly over over here. I'll open up my map as soon as I hit this beach over here like this, or this little rock formation. So this is the rock formation that I'm currently on, and what I'm going to be doing is climbing up here. Now, the shiny Lumion I got was also from a similar rock location in the northeast part of the game, and that's where I found mine, but something about these rocks tend to spawn in these Pokemon. So when you go to the corner of this rock, this exact corner right over here at the tip, right? Take a look at the water. Ready? Watch this. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. You got Lumion. Also, at the same time, while we got Lumion, look at that. Boom. Barascuda and Aracuda at the exact same time time two families and also two difficult pokemon to hunt down now the fun part is you're gonna probably have to use your double home zoom in button so you can see the difference of the shinies the shinies are on the screen so you can see that and what you want to do is basically watch this it's equal to almost a town respawn despawned out hit the corner wait for it wait one second you get pokemon to randomly spawn in boom what is that oh is that two families of lumion in front of me wow look at that also i'm getting some of my scrub because i am pokemon scarlet so keep in mind scarlet players will have scrubs in front of them anyway i I just constantly can keep doing this part over and over again on this rock formation until I am satisfied and get a specific shiny. Boom, there's another Lumion. Again, with some other random Pokemon spawns. So you, you do get a bonus of other Pokemon showing up, but at the same time, you can focus in on your hunts. So I, I find this actually to be a very fun way of pulling this off. This corner is so cool and there's crazy exploits. And as you see, there's another Lumion family in front of me and it just doesn't end. And once you find your shiny, you can simply just jump in the water and chase after it and uh, get the shiny sparkle to show up and that's pretty much how you're going to be hunting lumion or you could do the boring approach and run across the whole ocean and wait for families to spawn which is basically what we kind of said for love disc if you don't want to do the lavincia town respawn but this is probably uh, the best method to do this so good luck with this hunt all right pokemon violet players this is going to be your spot where you're going to be hunting down the famous tauros that is going to be the water tauros now the location that you want to spawn exactly to is the porto marinada and there are going to be just just loads, loads of these Toro. So this is a town spawn, so that's pretty cool. But when you come out of West Province Area 2, you're going to notice these Toros over here. And the best way to identify which one is the water one is going to be by looking at this guy. He's going to be very obvious. Blue and curly horns. And there's going to be tons of them that spawn. This is pretty much going to be the pathway I like to follow for them. A few will spawn in this spot here as we're going to our location. There's, there they are right over here. This is one I like to head over to. So from here, you kind of just curl in over here and we're going to look to the right and see some of the Tauros there. It's going to be that middle one right there. And what you're going to be using to identify if it's a shiny is going to be a little bit opposite color. So you'll be noticing the Tauros that is actually shiny is going to be a little bit darker while the fur around it is going to be lighter. That's how you're going to be able to identify. It's a tough to identify them at first, but when you look very closely, you'll be able to spot that. And as you can see on the Tauros, they're going to be the big middle one in the whole entire group. But as I'm continuing going through this area, I'm just going to spawn these guys in. There we go there's another spawn there's another pack spawn and i'm just really paying attention to the colors of the middle one right there just keep doing this pretty much just rock around the whole entire area spawn in these groups look for that water toros and again if you don't like the fact that it's you know not just pure water toros there's always the option of doing date skipping which you can do but i'm able to provide a good amount of these guys spawning in so you guys can keep checking each one but if you just want pure
secure, you can go for a date skip method. Pretty easy. I don't really have to show that in every clip and you'll be able to get a pure water Toro spawn in the area. But this should be uh, easy for you guys to hunt down for those who like a little bit of a challenge and doing overworld hunting because we're going to avoid as many mass outbreaks as possible if it's in the video. Just wanted to point this out too. Another quick option you could do is basically run this entire path all the way up to the Casa Roya point. So that's another option uh, and you can go really fast. As long as you're able to identify what a shiny looks like, you should be good to... Wait, nope, that's not shiny. Okay. Yeah, so speaking of identifying shinies, uh, you pretty much just have to go and uh, explore this pathway as well. You'll get some to spawn as you're heading to Casa Roya. Somewhere here, they should spawn. There we go. That's pretty much it. All right, that, those are your areas where you're going to be hunting this uh, water turtles. All right, Pokemon Violet players, if you want to just hunt your version exclusive along with some of its family members, you pretty much have Claw Witchers that spawn in this location, which is all the way up here at this north beach. We talked about this spot also for your Claw Witchers. This is going to be the spot. You just want to hang out in the water area specifically more than that. Also, if you pay attention, you'll also will find some Alamolas up here in this area. So your version exclusive is definitely going to be over here. There we go. You get some other Pokemon. There's an Alamola in this north spot. There's your Claw Witzer over here. Another Claw Witzer for those who are wondering. And this is all pretty much done without the power of uh, mass outbreaks. There's three Claw Witzers. So there's, <laughs> there's a good amount that spawns in here for you Violet players. There we go. Just kind of walking this area. There we go. Claw Witzer, Claw Witzer. They seem to really like you guys. The Violet players, you can grab your final evolution of your version exclusive. Also, fun fact, there are tons of Alamola in the north part as well. So as you're seeing on my screen, Alamola 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is going to be the north part. They don't spawn in families and they are solo spawns. So do keep that in mind for Alamola. There we go. Alamola again. It's so funny when you start to focus on one Pokemon, you start to only notice that Pokemon more than anything. Like if I'm starting to stare at Alamolas, I start to see them. There they are. There's three of them just sinking in the water right below me. One, two, three. So yeah, that's pretty much how you're going to be finding Alamola. We can also check this out in Scarlet real quick to see how good it looks in the north area minus the version exclusive. Okay, this is a uh, Pokemon Scarlet and I kind of want to confirm that there are also Alamolas exactly in the north area. We're going to have some of our Skrulp showing up in this area. So our version exclusive is going to be here. I say our because I play Pokemon Scarlet. So please ignore my English that sounds very biased towards Pokemon Scarlet. Moving around the north area, I see some Weasels here. And as I move towards, yep, there's Alamola right there. So they are also spawning in the north area. Of course, if you are having a hard time with them spawning, the best method for anyone to do is mass outbreak. So you could just do a, a date skipping around this area and you should be able to eventually get those to spawn. I noticed, there you go. There's Alamola here. There's another one over there. All right, so it is a common location in both Scarlet and Violet, although it does seem a little bit more common in Pokemon Violet, but that's pretty much the Alamola spots. Here's the, the map where you can find all of them, but they, if you stand still, they do come up to you. That is what the Pokedex entry says. So if you don't make any movements, eventually they will come up and you should get your shiny. So go to the north part pretty much. Uh, hang out over here and uh, that's I guess that's the best spot you can do for your hunting. All right, so if you come to uh, Area Zero, there's two spots to hunt down Iron Bundle. And this is all going to be a Pokemon Violet exclusive. One could be Region Station Lab number two. And Region Station Lab number two basically has you going up and down this pathway here, despawning and respawning a group out until you happen to get your just pure metal looking one that's chrome without having any colors on it. If we drop down all the way into the deep part of Area Zero, basically by Region Station Lab number four, I just don't want to do the transition, guys. I'm not doing the transition. There's Research Station Lab number four. We're going to head to this crystal over here, right below us. And we're going to have our lovely rock formation. And because the Deli Bird, I mean, the Iron Bundle is by itself here with nothing, and they fall off. <laughs> and they don't have anything else uh, that spawns here with them. This is going to be the spot to get them to all spawn in and see if they're going to be a shiny or not. And uh, the trick here is just to despawn out a group of them. And then once you despawn out the group, you just come back pretty much get a whole new bunch of spawns over there be careful of the ones that are falling off these guys are really dumb or you can just run around the entire area make your own pathway and just despawn a group out until you get your shiny and that's pretty much how you're going to be hunting down iron bundle if you're a pokemon violet player in area zero it's that simple and now you know every shiny hunting location for water pokemon and what to do to shiny hunt them so go ahead and click on this video to watch the entire playlist on every single type in the game and select whatever you want this right here. Click on that.